let's talk about the Homo Amena camouflage. G'day plant lovers. If you're new here, I'm Kathy. This is where I talk about my plants and all my other pet projects. If you're a return visitor, thank you. Really appreciate you guys coming back. Today I wanted to put the spotlight on the Homolamina camouflage. I think this is a beautiful plant. I am totally in love with it. I love the markings on the leaves. Reminds me very much of the Aglonema Pictum tricolor, but definitely doesn't cost as much. <laughs> I have had this one for approximately six months, so I think I have some experience looking after it. I also find it quite easy to take care of, so I thought I would go through the care requirements for this beautiful little plant. Even though it is more commonly known as Homolamina, the genus is actually Adelonema and Homolamina is a synonym for it. It is part of the Araceae family, Aroids, and it is also a flowering genus. They originate from Southern Asia and the Southwest Pacific, as well as Latin America. The name Homolamina may be a mistranslation of a Malayan common name, but it isn't 100% certain if that's accurate or not. There are more than a hundred species and they can be both subtropical and tropical plants. Some of them actually do have a scent of anise, which I really don't like, but this one definitely does not have a scent as far as I'm aware. Now this species of Homolamina is actually Wallisii and the camouflage is most likely a cultivar. I did do some research, but I couldn't precisely identify this particular species, but it seems like it is a cultivar, which means it hasn't grown naturally in the wild. It's something that has been cultivated by humans. I think that's accurate. The Wylissii species was first named and described in 1877 by a German botanist, whose name is Eduard August von Riegel. The Wallisii is native to Venezuela, Colombia and Panama and it is an understory plant which means it usually grows on the forest floor and is protected from the sun by the canopy of trees. The growth of a camouflage is approximately up to 50 centimetres high and it has a more widespreading habit as it's a clumping plant. Now with lighting, Homolamina camouflage likes indirect or filtered light. It cannot tolerate direct light because it will burn the foliage. I have mine approximately two meters back from a west facing window and it is still growing like crazy. Prior to that I had it in my living room in a north facing window and because we're in Australia, north facing is the best light that we can give our plants and I had it back around four meters and it was growing. Basically, these can tolerate the same temperatures that we can tolerate. They like warmth and they can tolerate low temperatures, but they can be frost sensitive. If you were to grow this outside, it would have to be in the shade and you would have to not have any frost, otherwise it will kill the plant. From the research I have done, Homolamina camouflage prefers high humidity. I haven't found that necessarily so. I don't have high humidity in my home. Up to recently it was probably around 50%. This one does have a few brown edges but I do believe this was more from the heater rather than a lack of humidity. I currently have this in a room where I do run a humidifier at around 55% and it's doing fine. There are no brown edges. It's looking really beautiful actually. I have also read it suggested that Homolamina camouflage would do better in a terrarium, but I disagree with that. This is doing quite well in my home and it is definitely not in high humidity or in terrarium conditions. 
So I think these are definitely a plant that you can have in your home and you won't need to worry too much about humidity. That is not to say that it won't prefer higher humidity. Any tropical or subtropical plant would prefer that. But I have found that in 50 to 55% humidity, it is doing really well. Regarding watering, these don't like to dry out completely. I use a moisture meter to check the soil of my plants. And when my moisture meter reads four or lower, that's usually when I'll water this. However, another way to tell is this plant is a little bit of a drama queen when it comes to water. I can go to bed one night and she'll look fine like this. And the next morning, all her leaves will have dropped down very dramatically. And I'll show you a picture of what that looks like here. So they definitely do let you know when they need watering. And I can tell from looking at her right now, strange how we always call them a she, but I can tell from looking at this plant that she is close to needing a watering. And I can also tell by the weight of the pot. So it is definitely a plant that talks to you and will let you know when it wants some water, which I really appreciate. Some plants you really can't tell. Oh, I think she's just beautiful. <laughs> okay. Now I'm not fertilizing her now because it is winter here in Melbourne, but like all plants, it needs fertilizer. I will wait until spring again before I fertilize. I could actually fertilize her now because as you can see, she is still growing. And she would probably appreciate it but I'm really reluctant to fertilize my plants in winter, even though they are still growing. Now, as to the kind of fertilizer you use, honestly, I think it's entirely up to you. You can use a slow release fertilizer, or you can use a liquid fertilizer. It's whatever you prefer. I don't think she needs a special fertilizer. And if you're a little worried about burning the foliage with too much fertilizer, then it's always better to under fertilize rather than over fertilize but this little beauty has been growing without my giving her any extra fertilizer just whatever is in the soil that she came with actually however i do give her sea salt every month and she just loves that and i think that's why she's growing so well for me now with soil for repotting like all plants you repot them when they outgrow the pot that they're in. She has not yet outgrown her pot, even though she has put on a lot of growth since I got her. But when I repot it, the kind of soil she'll need, like most plants, is a fast draining soil. I have read that they don't have deep root systems, but I haven't taken her out of the pot, so I can't confirm that or not. They do grow by rhizome, so in order to propagate Homolamina camouflage, it is by division, which means you divide the rhizomes. You cannot propagate it with leaf cuttings. That's with any plants that grow by rhizome. I think that's accurate. From what I've read, I think that is accurate. As for pests, I haven't had any issues with any pests on my Homolamina camouflage. I did have spider mites. And she was close to a plant that did get spider mites, but she wasn't affected. So I think she might be a bit more resistant to pests than perhaps other plants. Oh, she's just so beautiful. And I've deliberately left these bottom leaves because she has so much foliage. I find with a lot of plants, not just her, that the bottom leaves tend to yellow and die off, which is natural. But this is not a sign of any problems. It's simply a sign that this leaf is not getting enough light and it's an older leaf. And I also wanted to show you the crispiness that they can get if they're exposed to a lot of dry conditions or not enough humidity. But as you can see, this is a new leaf. I don't even know how many new leaves she has put out and they're just stunning, aren't they? She is a real beauty. 
I definitely recommend this plant because I think she is really easy care and I love that she actually talks to me and lets me know when she wants a water. Well that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this spotlight on my homolamina camouflage. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below and I will definitely respond. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, you can give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from me, you can subscribe to my channel. I bring out a plant related video every Friday. For those of you who have already subscribed, thank you really appreciate it. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and until next time, take care. Bye!